Hello everyone. Today I'd like to give a demo of how to use a physical Commodore 1541 floppy drive with a Commodore 64 emulator running in Microsoft Windows running in real time. We will be using a Zoom floppy uh, adapter and it has a real Commodore serial bus as well as a USB uh, port. For the drivers, I'll show how to install OpenCBM, and for the emulator, I will show how to install and configure Vice, the vers versatile Commodore emulator. I have no affiliation with any of these products. I'm just a regular user. There's already a lot of documentation and videos about these three products, so I'll be keeping this specific to just making this work in real time. As of today, I'm running the latest version of Windows 11, and this is a clean install, and there's no other software uh, loaded. I'm running Windows inside of a virtual machine, so you will see a couple of quirks, but otherwise this works the same on native Windows 10 or 11. The first step will be to download OpenCBM. and then I'll connect it to Windows. And you'll notice the first quirk is showing up here because I'm being prompted whether to connect uh, the USB device to the host or to the virtual machine. And just in my case, I will choose the virtual machine. So now I will open a command prompt and run the setup. And then it asks if it if it wants you to install the necessary drivers and you just say yes.
Okay, and then the installation is finished. And we now have this icon open CBM on the desktop. And now we need to turn on the power. And OpenCBM has quite a few uh, command line uh, tools that you can use. Uh, the main one is the CBM control. And if you look at the help, it has quite a few uh, different options in here. But what we're going to do is uh, actually try to detect the drive. And you'll see that it identified drive 8 as a 1541. If we send a reset command, you'll notice that the, the red light on the drive comes on momentarily and it, it actually resets the bus. We can retrieve the status from the drive and here it shows that it's uh, an actual 1541. And and we can actually read the directory from a floppy. So the next step will be to in download and install Vice. And we actually see that there's a new ver version released uh, just recently. So if we go to the downloads page, now we need to make a choice of what version we want to install. Uh, because Windows is running in 64-bit, uh, I'm going to choose the 64-bit version. And the other two options are uh, GTK or SDL. Uh, the, the difference between those is the way the menus are displayed. Uh, GTK has drop-down menus, so it looks like uh, just a regular Windows application. And the SDL version actually has on-screen menus. Uh, so you can actually run the emulator in full screen, and you can still see all of the settings because they appear inside of the, the emulator. Uh, but for my case, I'm going to choose the 64-bit version of uh, JTK. So the first time we run Vice, we'll notice that there's another quirk because I'm running inside of an emulator. The screen is actually showing up transparent, uh, but there's a, a trick. If you hover the window over a black background, uh, you can actually see the full screen. Again, this is just a quirk because I'm running in a virtual machine. This not, does not happen on a, a native installation of Windows 10 or 11. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, make some changes here. Um, 
So if I go under Preferences and Settings, and if I go under Machine and Model, I'm going to choose 64 NTSC because I'm in North America. And also because of uh, just a personal preference, I'm going to go under Input Devices and Keyboard and change it to the Positional Keyboard Layout because that's what I'm used to. So the next step is getting Vice to recognize OpenCBM. There's two ways that we can do that. So option one is if we open the OpenCBM uh, command line and look at the file path, we can see that OpenCBM has been installed to C program files. So we could actually go to C program files and then we could actually select all files in here, copy them and then paste them into the vice uh, bin folder. So that's kind of a quick and dirty method of uh, setting it up. Uh, the downside is if you ever upgrade vice or if you upgrade OpenCBM, all of your files are already all mixed together and that could cause problems. So that's one way to do it. So if you notice on a regular command prompt, if we look at the file path here, there's no reference whatsoever uh, to OpenCBM. So if we add that file path to the environment variable, then Vice will be able to use it. So that's what we'll do. So if we go to settings and just search for the word path. There's an option here to edit the environment variables for your account. And in here, we can actually modify the, the path. So if we go back to the OpenCBM, uh, we know that it's installed to this path. So if we copy this path and append the path to the environment variable, Now if we open a command prompt and look at path, we now see that OpenCBM is added here. So this will uh, allow uh, programs like Vice to be able to find OpenCBM. So the final step is to configure Vice. So if we go back and if we open our Commodore 64 emulator again, uh, one thing I forgot to do was to save the preferences. So if I go back to machine, model, NTSC, uh, and I like the positional layout, I'm going to save the settings on exit and also if I go under the settings and peripheral devices and drive you'll notice that uh, drive 8 is already configured to use a virtual 1541 but what we want to do is change that So we'll say none, we'll tell it it's going to be an IEC device, and here we can choose OpenCBM. And you'll notice as soon as I select that, that the uh, light on the zoom floppy begins to flash. Now we can uh, use the emulator uh, with the, the real drive in real time.
So we can pull up a directory right from the floppy. And we can actually load programs from the real physical floppy. Now there's just one more catch. You'll notice that the next time you open Vice, the light does not come on the zoom floppy. So if you go in and if you look at the settings and you look at the drives, You'll see that we still have uh, the real OpenCBM device selected. But if we go away from that, and then if we come back to that, uh, immediately the light becomes active again. And and the drive works again. So two final comments. Uh, I noticed that fast loaders in the em emulator do not seem to work with this setup. I don't know why. Also, I was curious if this would allow us to connect a real Commodore serial printer device. Uh, if we look at the preferences, settings, printers, you'll notice that there's an option here for real device access. Uh, but no matter what I did, I couldn't get that to work. So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching.